Hello Penguinauts, I'm the Bearded Penguin and welcome to Kerbal Space Program Space Race Episode 8. Now before we start today we're just moving the Quran 5 into a slightly different orbit around the moon because thanks to the new 1.1 contract system you actually get contracts based off of spacecraft that you've already got launched. So you're getting paid a little bit of money to shift it into a slightly lower orbit which is actually quite similar to things that are done in real life as well. I mean NASA used missions uh, long past their original mission expiry date. New Horizons, for example, I mean, it's gone past Pluto and it doesn't have enough fuel to get back to Pluto, but it does have enough fuel uh, on board to go visit the Kuiper Belt. So they've actually uh, got a couple of Kuiper Belt objects that they're actually going to go investigate because they've got enough fuel to do it and it's out there. We don't know much about the Kuiper Belt, so you know what? Why not use it? I mean, Voyager, uh, Voyager 1 and 2, they were both used, they're both still being used long past uh, their ori original uh, expiry dates as well. You know, if you've got a spacecraft up there and it's still functioning, why not still use it? Uh, so that's what we were doing there. Anyway, today we are going to Drez, and we're not just sending a probe like Tape sent two probe landers to Moho. No, 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 no. We are sending a single Kerbal. <laughs> One one little Kerbal all on their own, just because life support is heavy and expensive, so shut up. So sending up in two parts, uh, we've got the crew cabin and all the life support and stuff and a little bit of fuel and the lander and then in the second one we're sending up the drive section and all of the fuel and it's got a single nuclear engine to push it out to Drez.
off to Dreyer's, it's going to arrive there in quite a while, actually, it's going to take a little while to get there. And we've actually also got a Moho window at the moment. Now, we don't actually have a sophisticated um, SSTO technology as tape. We don't have the large plane parts because we've been researching uh, into nuclear propulsion and all that sort of stuff. However, um, we do still have pretty large plane parts, so we're not sending a lander to Moho. We can't get something up there with enough Delta V, but, well, I guess we could have assembled something in orbit, but pff, it's fine. Uh, we're just sending an orbiter to Moho. I mean, I'm pretty sure it can get into orbit. Um, it's got a lot of Delta V. It's using a very tiny um, nuclear engine, which is essentially fuel pumped through an RTG, uh, which is pretty cool. So it's got quite a lot of Delta V. Um, and so it should be able to get into orbit around Moho at least, so it'll be paid for with world firsts and stuff and uh, we should get quite a lot of science from that, although the majority of our science is coming from our Dres mission, which we can transmit a lot of that information and then just um, then just store information because um, you can transmit a large portion of science and then recover the rest of it so you transmit some of the data and then you recover the rest of it when you get back, which means you get a dump, a huge dump of science um, before you even have to get back, and then you get uh, the rest of the science when you get back from Dreads. So even if the series ends before we get back from Dreads, we're still going to get a huge amount of science, and we can reset all our experiments multiple times to keep basically transmit spamming, um, because we sent a scientist on that mission, not a pilot. We had a probe in order to have uh, SAS control on that. <laughs>
So now we're just sending our second uh, air launch because obviously this is quite large. It uses uh, the, sec the size 2 launch. Uh, this one we're just sending up to complete our Munmir station because frankly we don't need tape anymore. I, I expected him to launch something to it but I think he said with moving and everything he totally forgot about the Munmir station. So we built it ourselves. We don't need tapes. Help. We build strong station to provide science on the final frontier comrade yes i drink much coffee yes okay. <coughs> sorry i went down the wrong way i'm an idiot <laughs> i drank too much coffee in one go and my mind is running so fast i'm talking really fast this episode <coughs> sorry i probably need to stop the recording to to get that out you know, I really hate it when that happens. You know, when you just you drink perfectly normally, and usually it happens when you're in public and you're talking and stuff, and you drink too much accidentally, and it goes down the wrong way, and you're like, no! And you have to try and pretend that you have a cold or something to cover up that you're actually an idiot, and it went down the wrong way. That happens to me so often, because I just talk too fast, my mind runs really quickly. My body just can't keep up sometimes. Uh, but anyway, so we're, we're expanding the station. And Tape can actually put modules on this if he pays me 100,000 funds. Which may be, um, may be economically viable for him. Because this station has cost more than 100,000 funds for me. So if he just pays me 100,000 funds, um, then and then he can dock things to, to this station. Which has got a crew capacity for 19 Kerbals and obviously all the station equipment already on board. That could save him a lot of money and then I get some money back. So... Tape, if you do want to uh, to dock to the station and use it as an international station, you're going to have to give me some funding now, okay? <laughs>